Distinguished guests, representatives of the media outlets, ladies and gentlemen, United States Secretary of State, the Honorable Anthony Blinken, is paying an official visit to Mongolia at the invitation of Her Excellency Batsitsuk Batmong, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Mongolia. The minister and the secretary just held official talks and exchange views on a wide range of topics related to Mongolia-U.S. strategic third neighbor partnership. Now, Minister Batsitsuk and Secretary Blinken will deliver statements following the outcomes of their official talks. I am pleased to invite Minister Batsitsuk to address the media. Dear Secretary of State Antony Blinken, dear media representatives, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all. Now I am pleased to give a brief information about the official talks that I held with Secretary Blinken. I am thrilled that U.S. Secretary of State, the Honorable Antony Blinken, is paying an official visit to Mongolia. Your visit is special because it occurs right after the inaugural United States-Mongolia Comprehensive Strategic Dialogue that we launched in Washington, D.C. last week. And also, this is a very important visit because it is happening after the after I have been reappointed as the Foreign Minister of Mongolia. I would like to emphasize that my visit was my visit to the United States was the first overseas trip as the Foreign Minister of Mongolia, and I do believe that your visit is of great significance to continue the conversation to deliver concrete results on the cooperation issues discussed during the dialogue. The Secretary of State and I just held official talks and exchanged views on the possibilities of further consolidating the strategic third neighbor partnership between Mongolia and the United States and enhancing cooperation in all areas of mutual benefit as well as regional and international issues of mutual interest. Our conversation was productive warm and frank, and I am satisfied with its outcomes. The relationship between Mongolia and the United States has actively grown throughout our 37 years of diplomatic relations since its establishment in 1987. This is a clear testament to our two countries' commitment to our shared values that uphold democracy, human rights, freedom, and common interests to ensure peace, stability, and prosperity. The United States plays a leading role in Mongolia's third neighbor policy. In this framework, our two countries' political relationship is further strengthening through bilateral and trilateral mechanisms. Our collaboration in regional and international arenas is deepening, and now the United States has become Mongolia's close friend and strategic partner. I am delighted to underscore that the ties between our two countries have never been stronger. I am content that following Mongolian Prime Minister Oyung Erdene's visit to the United States in August 2023, we released the joint statement on the strategic third neighbor partnership between Mongolia and the United States of America, which celebrated our achievements and milestones of the past and set visions and goals for future cooperation. On behalf of the government of Mongolia, I would like to emphasize my eagerness to enrich the solid relations and cooperation in the spirit of our strategic third neighbor partnership even further. The economic cooperation roadmap for the strategic third neighbor partnership that Secretary Blinken and I signed during our prime minister's visit is an essential document for increasing bilateral commercial and economic ties and advancing our shared goal of attracting American investment to Mongolia. I am pleased that we are bolstering our bilateral cooperation and seeking possibilities to improve the investment climate in Mongolia. And we are pleased that many American companies are very interested to invest in Mongolia. The Mongolian side is very content to further our cooperation in investment with American companies. Also, we have exchanged information on the investment climate improvement the government is doing uh, during the recent years. And as you know, the Mongolian government has uh, made English as the secondary 
Education in Language, and Secretary Blinken just informed me that the U.S. government is committing to uh, open a English language excellence training center in Ulaanbaatar. It will be of great importance to train and uh, build capacity of Mongolian English language teachers. Also, we are content that we are making progress on launching nonstop passenger flights between our two countries, and also we're making progress on including extending the U.S. Mongolia Child Protection Compact Partnership, and we're committed to holding the energy dialogue this year in Ulaanbaatar. Mr. Secretary, we are always grateful for the successive U.S. administration's steadfast support in Mongolia's transition to democracy and market economy, building an independent so civil society, and improving investment climate efforts from the very beginning. Fostering our strategic partnership is not hindered by geographical remoteness, and people-to-people -people bonds serve as an important pillar of our bilateral, bilateral relations. I want to highlight that the growing Mongolian community in the United States, the Peace Corps volunteers who have reached every corner of Mongolia, mutual assistance during the COVID-19 pandemic and gracious U.S. aid during this winter's exceptionally harsh thought attest to the true spirit of our partnership. I am very too happy, happy to see you, Mr. Secretary, in my country. I have my f complete confidence that your visit will serve as a crucial impetus to further strengthen and expand the Mongolia-U.S. strategic third neighbor partnership and cooperation for the prosperity of both our nations and the benefit of our two peoples. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Batistek, Secretary Blinken. You have the floor. Well, thank you very much. And uh, Farm Minister Vizegi, thank you so much for your incredibly warm hospitality, for the very good conversations we've had um, already today, uh, pursuing the conversations that we had just um, a short while ago in Washington. Um, it's great for me to be here to continue the momentum from last week's inaugural Comprehensive Strategic Dialogue. Uh, and I think we've done exactly that uh, today. Uh, this visit to Mongolia following stops in Laos, in Vietnam, in Japan, the Philippines, Singapore, is part of my 18th trip to the Indo-Pacific as Secretary of State. Uh, I'm here because, as President Biden often says, so much of our shared future will be written in this region. Throughout this trip, I've heard from countries across the region about the vision that we all share for a free, open, connected, secure, prosperous, resilient region. That means, simply put, that problems will be dealt with openly, rules will be reached transparently and applied fairly, people, goods, ideas will be able to flow freely and lawfully on land, skies, cyberspace, the open seas. And it means that people and countries will have the freedom to choose their own future. Mongolia is a central partner in this region. Uh, the United States and Mongolia are proud third neighbors linked by shared democratic values, linked by common interests. Today, our two nations are partnering more closely on more issues than ever, to the benefit of our people and to the benefit of people across the region. Uh, we're building greater economic resilience that drives prosperity for our people. Uh, guided by the economic roadmap that we launched last summer, we're strengthening supply chains, we're reducing economic dependencies, we're creating good jobs. That includes clean energy, where Mongolia has tremendous potential in renewables and the digital economy, so that we can help Mongolia's economy be more connected, more resilient, and more secure. We're strengthening water security through our Millennium Challenge Corporation Water Compact. That partnership is going to increase Ulaanbaatar's water supply by 80 percent. That's a game changer for business, for industry, for the global supply chains that we're part of. We're working, as the Foreign Minister said, to establish direct flights between our countries, uh, building on the Open Skies Agreement that we signed just last year. That will create new opportunities for trade as well as for tourism. And that's essential because our people-to-people -people connections really are the lifeblood of this partnership. Thousands of Mongolians have studied the United States, including, among others, the Prime Minister, and I look forward to seeing him later today. We're committed to creating more opportunities for Mongolians to study in the United States and to learn English here in Mongolia. As the Foreign Minister said, today we are announcing the U.S.-Mongolia Excellence in English Initiative, which will significantly expand the number of high school students 
uh, studying under our Access English program. It will also boost the number of fellows, number of specialists, supporting English teaching capacity in Mongolian universities. We're also launching a new Center of Excellence for English Language Teaching at the National University of Mongolia. This will further raise standards for local English language teaching. And we're partnering with the United Kingdom, with Australia, with Canada, as well as with Google and Teach for Mongolia to set up the center, which will be run by Mongolians with our collective support. The United States and Mongolia are also working together closely on shared regional and global challenges. Uh, that includes the DPRK's missile launches. The United States appreciates Mongolia's willingness to promote peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula. And both of us stand up for the principles at the heart of the UN Charter. Sovereignty, territorial integrity, independence. Uh, I made clear that the United States would continue to support Mongolia's ability to import critical commodities in the short term and diversify its energy sources over the long term. Finally, we're working together both to uphold and promote our shared values. Uh, 35 years ago, Mongolians went to the polls, voted for democracy. The United States stands as a partner in upholding and advancing our shared values. We're expanding our joint efforts to strengthen good governance, the rule of law, to fight corruption, to uphold fundamental freedoms, including the freedom to practice one's own religion. We're also partnering to protect the most vulnerable, including child victims of trafficking and forced labor. Today, we're announcing an additional $1 million over the next year to support this work through the Child Protection Compact. Virtually every day, this relationship, this partnership between the United States and Mongolia is reaching new levels. Uh, soon, we'll break ground on a state-of-the-art new U.S. Embassy compound worthy of our ambitious vision for our partnership and of the American and Mongolian people who are working every day to make that vision a reality. Thank you. Төрийнэр эмч хин дарга линкэн тань талархал хэлэр хэлээ. Одоо Монгол Улсын гадаад харилцааны сайд Батц зэг Америкийн нэгдсэн улсын төрийнэр эмч хин дарга NTNM линкэн нар тус бүр хоёр асуултад хариулна. Эхний асуултыг MNB сүгэн сэтгүүлч Ариун Чимэг асууна хэмээн өрж байна. MNB Ариун Чимэг. Blinken Mongolia is one of the main partners of the United States in Asia. Currently, Mongolia and U.S. are communicating at the level of strategic third neighbor partnership. The support from third neighboring country is, countries is important for Mongolia to increase its energy security and economic stability. What real support of investment and technological assistance will the United States offer to increase Mongolia's energy security and economic stability? What is the position of the U.S. government in this regard? Thank you very much. Um, I think we're seeing uh, that partnership, that relationship move forward every single day. Uh, just in the, in the last few years, you're seeing increasing uh, economic connections, um, economic support, economic investment uh, coming from the United States uh, here in, in Mongolia in ways that are uh, helping Mongolia develop key sectors. Uh, build resiliency uh, in those sectors of the uh, of the economy, create more opportunity uh, and more jobs uh, for Mongolians. And what we talked about today was how do we uh, take this to the next level? I think there are tremendous uh, potential and opportunity, particularly in the energy sector, for renewables, uh, critical minerals. Uh, and what we talked about um, today was how do we do even more to strengthen the investment climate? Because when the United States is engaged, it's typically through our private sector. Uh, the government supports that work. Uh, we work um, with closely with the private sector. Uh, we work closely with um, other governments. Uh, but fundamentally, uh, these are decisions that the private sector makes about uh, investments. And we want to make sure that the investment climate is as strong as it possibly can be here to uh, attract all that investment uh, with transparency, uh, with the rule of law, uh, with the kind of support that the private sector needs. I'm convinced, based on what I, I know and see all around the world, that when the United States is engaged, when we're investing, uh, we're doing it as a race to the top, uh, investing in ways that meet the, the needs and the priorities of uh, partner countries, of local communities, uh, doing it in a way that um, when it comes to th anything involving um, manufacturing um, that um, upholds the rights of workers, 
uh, that uh, make sure that we're protecting the environment. Uh, we don't uh, pile debt on, on countries as they're um, working to uh, strengthen their economies. And I think that creates um, outcomes that are beneficial to everyone. So what we're working to do now is to, uh, is to look at how, again, we can raise that to, to the next level. We're working closely with the uh, Mongolian government on this. I look forward to pursuing that conversation later today as well with, um, with the Prime Minister and the President. Uh, and I, I see tremendous potential um, ahead building on what we've already done. Uh, separate from that, I think what's so important is for us to be doing everything we can to build, help build the capacity of Mongolia to reach its full potential uh, as an economy uh, and uh, as a, a country engaged with the world. And so, for example, um, some of the technical support programs that we're uh, engaged in, they do that. We, t we just talked a lot about the um, building English language capacity. When the foreign minister was in Washington just um, a little over a week ago, one of the things that she highlighted to me was the strong support for those programs here in Mongolia and the desire to do more. And just in the space of a week, uh, we have uh, looked at what we can do to expand uh, our English language capacity building and programs here in Mongolia. The reason this is so important is that in this moment in history, in this moment in time, uh, the English language is the international currency for business transactions, for engagement uh, with the world. And countries that uh, have more and more people with uh, that fluency, they'll be able uh, to uh, fully engage um, in, uh, in business, in trade, um, as well as in many other things that are really beneficial uh, to those countries. So we're very proud to be able to, uh, to work hand in hand with Mongolia on this. I'm looking forward later today to actually meeting uh, with some people who participated uh, in these English language programs. Thank you very much. Can I now call Edward Wong of the New York Times? When you talk about being a third neighbor of Mongolia, you're clearly referring to both Russia and China, which are the main rivals of the U.S., as well as perhaps adversaries. You and President Biden say you're not trying to suppress or contain China's mm -hmm. rise. But let's pretend we're sitting in Beijing and looking at the range of U.S. policies and actions. We have a U.S. military buildup in the region, U.S. efforts to continue strengthening its military alliances, of which the current trip is a part of. Um, we have President Biden continuing Trump-era tariffs which are inflationary for the U.S. customer and consumer, and we also have recent export control policies on advanced technology. So, and you add to that uh, President Biden's framing of his foreign policy as democracies versus autocracies. So given all that, are you able to present any convincing arguments to Chinese leaders and policymakers that you're not trying to contain or suppress China's rise? And separate but related, Five years from now, what is the modus vivendi that you would like to see exist between the U.S. and China? You're clearly groping for some form of modus vivendi between the two nations. And for Madame Foreign Minister, this is my fourth trip to Mongolia. It's been 16 years since I was last here. And when I look around Ulaanbaatar, there's clearly been a lot of economic growth. Um, both China and Russia are, are clearly large trade partners in Mongolia. Um, on our trip across Asia with the Secretary, We've heard some Asian officials say the U.S. has to do more to enhance its commercial opportunities and ties with their nations. Um, do you feel the U.S. is on a route to enhancing its commercial ties in a sufficient manner with Mongolia? Thank you. Ed, thank you very much. And uh, just very quickly on the last point that, that you addressed to um, the foreign minister. Uh, one of the things I noted uh, throughout this trip on our previous stops, and this is particularly uh, true with regard to the ASEAN uh, countries, uh, trade is usually important, and we are a trading nation, and all these countries are too, and we'll always look for ways to enhance trade, uh, and particularly with a focus on what are the critical elements of trade in the 21st century. The digital economy is, for all of us, a growing part uh, of our economies, and one of the things that we're doing through uh, IPEF, the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, is to look at ways to enhance digital trade. Uh, but the other side of the coin is also usually important and sometimes gets overlooked, and that's foreign direct investment. I noted on this trip that throughout the ASEAN countries, the United States is the largest provider by far of foreign direct investment. Um, and similarly, uh, we happen to be in the United States the largest recipient around the world of foreign direct investment. That's a very powerful thing because it really is evidence of um, trust between countries as well as between 
uh, private sectors. It's evidence of optimism and confidence about the future because you don't make investments uh, unless you're optimistic uh, about where they'll lead in the future. And to me, that shows both um, the strength of our economic engagement uh, throughout the region in ways that are benefiting people in the region, and it shows the strength of the United States in this moment, of our economy, and confidence that countries, investors around the world have uh, in the United States. So I'm, I know you didn't address that to me, but I did want to address it myself. Um, with regard to, um, uh, to China and to the region, first, our focus is on a shared affirmative vision for the region, not about China, but about the many countries that we're working with who have this shared vision. And as I said, it's a vision for an open, uh, for a uh, connected, for a free, for a prosperous, for a resilient region. And the relationships that we have, yes, there are military components to uh, many of them, but that is only a, one part of the story. Uh, and fundamentally, uh, we're about doing everything we can together to enhance opportunity for people in the United States and people uh, in these countries, uh, to find ways to grow our economies, to make sure that um, we're all building in resilience because we've seen, uh, particularly in recent years, some of the vulnerabilities that we all have, for example, with, uh, with supply chains. Uh, and in each of these areas, uh, this is not uh, against any one country. It's for a common vision that we share for what the future should look like. And yes, part of that common vision is clearly the freedom to, uh, for every country uh, to make its own decisions, to make its own choices uh, about the future. And we stand strongly and always will uh, for that proposition. Uh, when it comes to, um, to China, and I, uh, as you know, spent, um, I think this is my sixth uh, meeting with uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi uh, just uh, since uh, a year ago, June, and uh, many phone conversations as well. And we take very seriously uh, the need to manage the relationship between the United States and China responsibly. And that's exactly what we've been doing. Uh, and as I've said many times before, it, it's impossible to sum up what is one of the most complicated and consequential relationships on a, on a bumper sticker. There are, are clearly uh, aspects of competition in the relationship. And as, from our perspective, competition is a good thing as long as it's, as long as it's fair, as long as it's on a level playing field. Um, there are uh, aspects of contestation where we have real differences and we're, if, as necessary, uh, going to uh, contest them. Uh, and there are aspects of cooperation because as two of the leading countries in the world, uh, there are going to be and there have to be areas where we cooperate when it's in the mutual interest of our people and I think we've demonstrated that. So the modus vivendi is something that uh, I think we're putting into play and into practice right now. It's making sure that we're engaged on all of those levels, in all of those dimensions, uh, for the United States, it's also about doing it from a position uh, of strength and confidence. And that's something we've been able to do in the last three and a half years um, in two ways. One, uh, we have made historic investments in ourselves. Uh, President Biden, through the uh, infrastructure bill, uh, through the Chips and Science Act, through the um, Inflation Reduction Act, these are investments that um, are resonating around the world because people see that we're serious about our, our future, serious about our competitiveness, and that's a tremendous source of strength. And similarly, uh, for my part, I'm very focused on making sure that we're working closely with other countries that have a, a, a shared vision uh, and uh, a desire to work together to try to realize that vision. Our alliances, our partnerships, both existing ones and new ones, are stronger and better than they've ever been. But again, that's for an affirmative purpose, not a, not a negative purpose. And um, I think that we, we have a, as you put it, uh, a modus vivendi, and we're working to strengthen that every day. Thank you very much for the question. Mongolia enjoys comprehensive strategic partnerships with both our nations, uh, both our immediate neighbors, the Russian Federation and the People's Republic of China. 
and now we're at, and now we're pursuing our third neighbor policy very actively in the recent years especially we want to expand and enrich our economic cooperation with our third neighbors especially we seek to foster mutually beneficial cooperation as well as we are interested to um, to uh, seek integration processes in the region and also many Mongolian youth and students are studying in the United States they're learning from the technological advancements and great developments in the United States and just now with the Secretary of State we have discussed concrete issues of bilateral cooperation and attract investment from the United States. Within the framework of the economic cooperation roadmap we signed in August 2023, American investment is important for Mongolia, so we're eager to cooperate to attract more investment from the United States in a short period of time. And Mongolia is fostering friendly relations with all members of the United Nations. We have established diplomatic relations with all the members of the UN. Our and we pursue open or uh, open peace oriented independent multi pillar foreign policy and i would like to emphasize that the united states has been um, extending steadfast support from the very beginning from our democratic transition and democratic transition to a market economy and i would like to emphasize their support was crucial in uh, fostering by uh, mutually beneficial cooperation thank you very much thank you Excuse me, dear media representatives, we have uh, we have short time left until the next meeting, so I would like to uh, now uh, call on the Washington Post's uh, Michael Birnbaum. Uh, thanks very much. Um, Secretary Blinken. Is this on? Yes. Um, I uh, have a question about the, the Mideast. Um, you mm -hmm. just met with... Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu in, in Washington. He didn't tell you, it seems, about a Tehran assassination plan. Uh, critics say that Iran has been stringing you, uh, Israel has been stringing you along uh, on the ceasefire. Uh, so my question is, does Israel need to contain it, constrain itself on actions that might draw in the United States militarily if it wants continued support from the U.S., or do they have a blank check from you? Uh, and uh, also wanted to ask, how does the Tehran assassination affect the effort to reach a ceasefire. Can you tell us specifically what you're trying to do to salvage those ceasefire negotiations? And um, for uh, Madam Foreign Minister, I, I know that you're working to find more neighbors, third neighbors, um, but you know, if you look at a map, Russia and China are right next to you. They're always going to be right next to you. Um, what assurances uh, was the Secretary able to give you today that the United States is going to be as interested in Mongolia in five years or ten years when it's not working as potentially aggressively to try to deal with uh, Russia, China, their connection? I mean, how do you know the United States is in it for the long term with you? Thank you. Michael, thank you. Uh, with, um, with regard to the Middle East, right now, the path that the region is on is toward more conflict, more violence, more suffering, more insecurity. And it is crucial that we break this cycle. And that starts with a ceasefire that we've been working on, uh, and I believe is not only achievable, it has to be uh, achieved. And then, building on that ceasefire, to have an end to the conflict uh, in, in Gaza, uh, to produce calm in the north between Israel and Lebanon, uh, and then to work on broader, more enduring peace and security. But it all starts with a ceasefire. And to get there, uh, it also first requires all parties to, ta to stop taking any escalatory actions. Uh, it also requires them to find reasons to come to an agreement, not to look for reasons to delay or say no to the agreement. Uh, and it's urgent that all parties make the right choices in the days ahead, because those choices are the difference between staying on this path of violence, of insecurity, of suffering, or moving to something very different and much better for all parties concerned. Now, again, I can't predict the, the effect, the impact of any one event on what comes next. <laughs> I've learned over many years not, not to do that. Um, 
But I think it remains manifestly the case that ceasefire is in the interest of everyone. It's in the interest of Israelis. It's in the Isra interest of Palestinians. It's in the interest of the region. So as long as everyone is focused on what their core interests actually are, um, I believe that not only will we keep uh, working to reach a deal, we will reach a deal because it is simply imperative uh, that we do so. Um, and I've been uh, very focused over the last uh, 24 hours in engaging uh, my own colleagues throughout the region. Um, we're obviously here in the Indo-Pacific, uh, but thanks to modern technology, we're on the phones constantly, um, and we're all focused on making sure we can get the ceasefire over the, over the finish line and building on it for everyone's sake for the future. I will be very brief because we have little time left. Mongolia is committed to ensuring stability and security in Northeast Asia as well as in the world. We have many initiatives and the United States has been very supportive of ours, of those initiatives. I would like to emphasize the Ulaanbaatar dialogue that we uh, have initiated and Secretary Blinken also emphasized that the United States will continue to support this initiative of Mongolia and media freedom and human rights issue as well as the strengthening of democracy in Mongolia is very important in our bilateral cooperation and the United States has been has been committed to supporting our efforts in this regard. We don't have any civil wars and internal and uh, domestic and issues and Mongolia is committed to further um, further contributed to ensure stability and security in this region as well as in the world. So the United States will continue uh, supporting our efforts in this regard. And also we have discussed issues on cooperation within the framework of our uh, development programs, especially our long-term development policy. And the United States will help us to and assist us to in all possible ways to become a for Mongolia to become a developed country. Thank you very much. Now the joint press availability has uh, concluded. Thank you.